everybody! Here we are for Wild Animals Around the World South America edition. So we've actually journeyed all around the world, haven't we? Mm -hmm. We've hit every continent and Alexis, to celebrate that, let me get my map up. Why don't you sing for us the lovely continent song while I point to them. Asia, Europe, Africa, then down to Antarctica, North and South America, last of all Australia, Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean. and southern too. Very nice, thank you. And next week we're actually going to be learning more about those oceans as we're gonna be getting into fish. So today's our last day learning about the mammals around the world and we are in South America. And let me show you something really, really cool about South America. So South America, is all, did you see all these habitats? Oh, good afternoon. Yes, and we'd love to know who's watching with us today. If you could do, go ahead and give your name, your age, and you're either your favorite mammal or the mammal that you're going to make your report on. We'd love to hear from everybody watching. So as I'm, we're waiting to hear, I wanted to show you South America. Look how much is rainforest. As you can see, we're kind of, we're dressed in our South American, um, <laughs> our jungle wear today. Um, but yes, yeah, so look at all that rainforest. And the Amazon rainforest is here in um in South America is the largest rainforest in the world. There is some temperate forest, which is a little bit of a cooler and not quite, it has the forest, um, it's not quite as uh, moist as the rainforest would be. Just a little bit of Alpine, the Andes Mountains, and just a little bit of desert area and some grassland there at the bottom. Well, we're glad to see everybody watching with us today. We're actually gonna take a vote from the start on which South American mammals we should explore today. This one's actually just about little sloth babies. Is that sweet? <laughs> we have the llamas, which they are actually in different parts of the world, but they're native to South America. The capybaras, those are really cool creatures. And they're only in South America. These are fun too. The howler monkeys. That's, they're actually one of the loudest ma land mammals. We have the South American tapirs. That's another great stuff. And the kinkajous. They're really cute. Actually, I've got two books on kinkajous. And Sarah's at age six. She wants to learn about the howler monkeys. Oh, that's a good one, Sarah. And I literally like these howler monkeys. They only live in South America and they're so, so loud. So the sloths and the howler monkeys. Yep, those are some good votes. And I would, I would vote for the sloths too. The sloths are so cute. Now jaguars, they are the largest wild cat in South America. So that's another good one. And then the new species of the Olingitu. That's a new one. So let's start with our howler monkeys. That was the first boat I saw. And then we'll move on to our sloths. So your very last mammals page is, oh, page number 15. There we go. It looks like they're cleaning up our leaves outside. I don't know if you can hear that loud sound. We have our windows closed, but um, we live in the village and it's really nice because all you do, you put all your leaves out into the street and they come around and they clean up all of the um, the leaves. And we also have some votes for the jaguars. Oh yes, Dora, that's a good one too. It's fun because I think we've actually have, I think we've focused on a wild cat from the different areas. So it would be kind of good to finish up with the jaguars too. Next to your word mammals, on your book, you're going to write South American. S O. U T H that's South and then American is A M E R I C A N. Mackenzie says, Thank you so much for doing this Facebook Live. It's been so fun. It's been a great learning experience. Oh, well, thank you, Mackenzie. And we've really enjoyed having you. You've kind of been us with us from the start, so it's nice to be able to have. Um, interaction with people as we do these videos. It makes our, our day just a little more exciting, right? Because it's kind of just the two of us for the most part, right? <laughs> so it's nice to have some friends to join us too. So without further ado, we've got our South American mammals. Let's start with that howler monkey. 
Where'd you go, little Howard? Oh, here we go. Look at this cute little face. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> you can see that he's howling. And even this picture, too. Look at that shows them all. How Howler Monkey is H O W L E R. So it's kind of like two sparts, H O W L E R. And then monkeys, the same way, M O N M O N K E Y. So Howler Monkeys are actually named for their loud, loud calls. Look at that little, look at that mouth, how big it gets. They can actually be heard from miles away. Isn't that crazy? So here's the Howler Monkey territory. You can kind of see they're all, they're in most of South America, a little bit in Central America, but mostly all over. Oh, see, Mackenzie's howling like the Howler Monkey too. <laughs> Alexis, can you give everybody a howl? Ow! <laughs> That's a good howl. So here's the Howler Monkey. Um, New World monkeys, they're found just in the Central and South America. And the old world monkeys are the Asian African. They spend most of their lives up in the trees. Isn't that crazy? So the howler monkeys are actually, are not, they're not the only monkeys in South America. Because of the rainforest, there's so many different creatures. The howler monkey's furry tail has a little bare spot on, under the tip. And this helps so he can hold on to branches better. So you can't quite see, but you can see where he's holding on to the, the branch there. So there's actually not fur. That way he can grip on a little bit better. So howler monkeys are actually the biggest type of New World monkeys. And the reason why they're called the New World monkeys is the Americas are considered the New World. As you remember, Christopher Columbus um, sailing across the Atlantic Ocean, and he discovered the New World. So that's why they're. 1492. Yep, in 1492. Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Yep, in 1492, right? So yeah, so how are monkeys? Um, they're, they're the largest monkey over in South America. They're also the loudest, one of the loudest mammals in the world. Look at this picture here. This one's a really good one showing him howling. Arr! <laughs> South America actually has 13 different kinds of howler monkeys. And they come in all sorts of colors. They tend to be in about 20 groups of 20 monkeys. So they are not solitary creatures. They love being in a group. They can have a lot of different colors. Red, black, gold, or brown hair. So they really range in different colors. But they're all on the large side but the males are bigger than the females. Their tails actually can be three feet long. The loudest mammal is actually the blue whale. They're considered like a marine mammal. So the loudest land mammal is the howler monkey. They eat the shoots and the leaves, flowers, fruits. They even eat whatever bugs are hanging out in the trees. So basically if it's in the tree, they're gonna eat it, right? So they're omnivores. Guess what? They also look for water in the trees. So they really don't come down even to drink water. Like if they can't find enough water in the tree, they would come down to find water, but they really like hanging out up in the, in top of the tree tops. Imagine your whole life being up in a tree. I know, well that's, that's what they like. There's actually quite a few rainforest creatures that spend their whole lives in the trees. The sloths are another one that we're gonna learn about. So here's the, the mommy and the baby. These are always some of my favorite. Look at them. Aren't they so cute? The howler monkeys live for 25 years total. Oh, look at this nice black one. Not only are they loud, but they're also um, on the brave side too. They have to be really, really safe from the harpy eagles. They do find their food and their safety in trees. Of all those interesting facts, what was something that stood out to you, Alexis? That they are the loudest land mammals. Very, yes, and they are. And like I said, it's a really cool thing to hear. If I could get it to work out, I could kind of share that with you. But yeah, it's really cool to hear how loud they are. They're really, really loud. So they're like, ah! Yeah. Ah! So she's pretty loud too, but I think the howler monkey's even louder than her. So now let's move on to our sweet little sloths. Oh my goodness. So sloth is spelled S-L-O. T-H. So here's a sweet little hairy sloth. Isn't he cute? I'm curious, who has seen a sloth in real life? They are very slow. It's so funny to watch them because they literally, when, like, when they reach up to grab something, 
it's like literally that slow. It's so funny to watch because we're so used to being so fast paced in our human world that yeah, the sloths are so, so slow. So that's, they'll reach very slowly, grab their leaf, they'll munch it and then they'll grab another. So they spend a lot of their time eating because they eat, they it takes them so long. So sloths are slow animals, but you know what? They are not lazy. They're slow, but they're working all day long to eat. Ooh, look at this nice picture. So this is the parts of a sloth. You don't often see them climbing like this. So this is kind of a little bit of an unusual um, picture to see. So obviously they have their hair, they have eyes, they have claws and legs. And this one you can see is a three-toed sloth. There are two-toed sloths and three-toed sloths. Isn't that cute? Look at it. It looks I like know. it's putting its eyebrows down like this. I know it does. <laughs> it's funny because yeah, sloths to me always kind of look like they're smiling. Oh, Mackenzie saw a sloth at the zoo. Have you ever seen a sloth, Alexis? I was trying to remember if you had. Yes. Have you seen one? Was it at the zoo? It was I. Yep. I know for sure we've at least watched videos on sloths, but I couldn't remember if you had seen one or not. So sloths have a very small diet. They mostly just eat leaves. There he is eating his leaf. They will eat fruits and twigs too. Like when I saw one, um, I saw one that was actually in a zoo where they did programs with it and they would feed it fruit because that made them really, really happy. They love fruit. The fruit's like a treat for them. So they live, as we said, in South America and a little bit of Central America, and they make the trees their homes. They rarely come down from the trees. They spend most of their lives in the trees. And when they sleep, they just hang upside down and sleep in the tree. So this shows you a little bit more exactly where the sloths live. As you can see, it's mostly in Northern South America and just a little bit of Central America. Did you know they only go down once a week to go to the bathroom? Yes, that's a very good fact. You should write that one down too, right? That's right, they only do, they only leave the trees once a week. Can you believe only having to go potty once a week? That'd be crazy, wouldn't it? I could probably do it. Yeah, she's actually, she's a little bit of a camel. Like we can go for a long time, like on road trips, she can go a long time without having to go to the bathroom. So you're a lot like a sloth, but maybe not quite a whole week. I could probably do it for three days at the least. <laughs> so sloths are not very social and they don't live in groups or pairs. You'll often see a sloth alone, except for one instance. When do you think that is? When they have their baby. Yeah, when they have their sweets. I'll get closer with the baby. Oh, I love the baby ones. So when they have their sweet little babies. So the mama the and the babies will live with their mama for just about a year. Look at that sweet, sweet face. Oh. And during that year, they'll actually drink their mama's milk for the whole year. And then slowly towards the end of that year, the mommies will actually show them. Oh, this is covered. <laughs> Oh, and here, Mackenzie, here it says right there. They poop once a week right there. Well, look at this little sloth in the water. He's taking a little bath. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Oh my goodness, sloths are so cute. And actually, believe it or not, they're excellent swimmers. That's something I didn't know. That's a good fact to write down too, right? That they're actually really good swimmers. They actually sleep 16 hours a day. And there's a close-up of his little, of the sloth eyeball. Isn't that cool? So there's some really neat facts about sloths. I did I did want to show you a couple of these baby pictures in here of the baby. So this is actually sloth babies at the zoo. So these ones are, the first one we saw was in the wild. These are sloth babies at the zoo. I just wanted to share some of these pictures with you. Oh, they're so, so cute. So what do you think? Is, ass, is a sloth's hair um, coarse or is it soft? I wonder if people have any guesses. Do you think it's coarse? I think it might be. And in fact, you can see on this one a little bit. In fact, they're so slow. You can see how it's got a little green tint to it. Mm -hmm. See that? It's because they, they actually grow moss on them because they're so, so slow in algae. They're so slow that, that, that the moss and algae can grow on them. Isn't that cool? So I bet it would be growing. pretty easy to catch a sloth. Oh yeah, definitely would. And in fact, that that's kind of a danger to them is that humans will um, capture them and try to sell them as pets. But yeah, that's definitely not um, not a safe thing. Like if I did do that, I would probably keep it as a pet and I would eat it, fr feed it fruit and stuff. And I would make a habitat for it. 
Yeah, I could. Yep. It would want definitely a nice tree, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, so Mackenzie's the same as we, you, or she can she can wait a long time to go to the bathroom. Same as you. Not me though. Not me at all. So here you can see them um, hanging upside down and how they eat and they sleep upside down. Here's the um, mama with the baby again. I'll show you a picture. Isn't that sweet how she's just hugging on her mama? They sleep for 16 to 18 hours a day. Man, can you imagine if you slept that long? Oh yeah, that would be amazing. I know, she does. She's... No alarm. Yeah, this one could sleep a long time. She loves she loves eating and sleeping just like the sloths do, right? <laughs> so they actually don't hear or see well. And that's why it's important that they can stay in that tree. That's kind of like their protection. What would you make a sloth for lunch? Probably a fruit salad, like, you know, kiwis, mangoes. Mm. I like that idea. Oh, this one, you can really see the algae on them. Look, look at how green that fur is. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. Isn't that crazy to see? They also have like, I, I, I literally has like green for like literally. It is. It's literally green. So that's a good fact too. But it's because their hair is really rough and their hair actually has like little tiny cracks in it. And that's what the, where the algae can grow. Because the algae basically just needs moisture. Even the baby sloth is born up in the tree. Here's some facts that you learned about those sweet little sloths. They go down from the tree once a week. Excellent swimmer and they grow allergy. Mm -hmm. Those are all very good facts. And oh, here's one more. The sloth is the world's slowest mammal. So we did have another vote for the jaguar. So why don't we move on to our jaguar? It's the wild cat. It's the largest wild cat in South America. Do you think jaguars like to swim? No. <laughs> and actually the jaguars are the, are the largest cats in North and South America. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, spelling. Yes, thank you for reminding me, Alexis. Yes, to spell jaguar, it's kind of a weird spelling. J A G U A R. Very good. And if you want to write down the fact that they are the largest wild cat in South America. Unlike most cats, jaguars actually like the water. You see that one swimming? You see that? That's pretty cool. So they actually like to swim. And they usually live in the area for lots of plants because they use those plants to kind of hide so they can prowl and catch their prey, right? So there we have our jaguar. And it shows you on the map there, South America in the Amazon rainforest. That's the largest rainforest in the world. So the adult jaguars have the yellow or golden eyes and they can see really well at night. They like to hunt at night. And look at those beautiful spots. The spots are a little different than the cheetahs spots. Jaguars are the only, are the third largest type of cat in the world. Only lions and tigers are bigger. So they are, but look at, you can really see their spots in this picture. So the jaguar spots are called the rosettes because they're shaped like roses. And guess what? They don't, they don't only have spots. You can also have a black jaguar. Whoa. There's, there he is catching his prey. What right is here. that? It's either a caiman or, yep. It's a caiman. So a caiman is like an alligator, like an alligator-like uh, reptile that lives in the Amazon rainforest. But they'll actually eat 85 different kinds of creatures. So they're open there. You can hear our creature. There's our mammal. There's somebody walking by that she's trying to protect us from. So jaguars will mostly hunt on the ground, but they actually will go up into the trees even to catch their prey. They actually will not build lasting homes. So it's a lot of creatures will build a home and stay there. The jaguar finds just wherever he wants to let to rest. So the jaguar moves around a lot. So if, you, if, you, if any of you have moved around to a lot of different homes or different places, that's how the jaguar is too, right? So Alexis has been in the same, we've been here since she was born. So she's been in the same house. Their home area is about 10 to 50 miles. So in that 10 to 50 mile range is where they'll find a place to rest. So his roar kind of sounds like a grunt. Like, mm, mm. Whoa! Yep, there's the baby. He's eating his nope. baby. No, nope, he's not eating. I know it does kind of look like it, but no, he's not eating his baby. So here you can see the jaguar. That's just, the mama's just carrying the baby. But that's how they Can't carry they, them. Like right on the back or something? 
Well, the thing is they can't hold their, they're a little bit too young and they don't have the balance they need to, to hang on to their mama's back like that. So yeah, so they actually have extra skin on their neck so the mama can grab them at their neck and it doesn't hurt them. Same thing with like, um, Polly. Well, yep, with our doggy or with like puppies and kittens, like they have a little extra fur or extra skin on their neck too. We'll actually drink mama's milk for about five to six months and then they'll start hunting on their own. Aren't they cute though? Look at that one. Look at that sweet little face. Oh my goodness. So, so cute these little the jaguars are. And really all the babies are so cute. So they'll live to be about 11 or 15 years old. So Alexis, what can you share? What was the fact that you learned? They the like jaguar? to swim. They do. The capybara is actually the largest rodent in the world. So the capybara is C A P Y B A R A. Capybara. Capybara. So they are the largest rodents in the world. And they do, they live in South America. You can see it's more in the grasslands. Ooh, and Mackenzie likes the kinkajou too. So I think I think we'll finish up with the kinkajou because I like them too. And they like to be in the rivers, lakes, and grasslands. They're actually at home on land or in the water. They're very similar to what we learned about last week, the muskrats that we have a lot here in Michigan and, and lots of North America. It's a rodent that really just, they feel really at home in the water. They tend to have about 10 capybaras that live together in their family group. So they're not solitary creatures like the muskrat. Remember, it likes to just be by itself. So that's one fun thing is to learn about these different creatures and how that even though they're so similar, they're both rodents that like to live in the water, yet the muskrat likes to be by itself and the capybara wants to be about with about 10 people in their family. And like we said, they're the largest rodent in the whole world. So that's a good fact. This is a great little picture of their webbed feet. I'll get a little closer so you can see. But look at their webbed feet. It reminds me a little bit of like either the platypus or the hippopotamus. Just like the hippos, they do like to munch on water plants, but they mostly eat grass. So they kind of just hang out in the water to cool down. Um, they sleep in the water, but they actually like to get up onto the land to eat the grass. That's their primary diet. They eat about eight pounds of grass in one day. That's a lot of grass. Can you eat that much grass? No. <laughs> oh, and here's their little baby. So they only have about one or two litters a year. And each litter has up to eight babies. After about a year, the capybaras will leave their mamas and they'll start their own families. Look how content this one looks. I like the, I like how this one, look how he's just kind of chilling. And now we got his eyes closed. Just looks so content. Just like a little happy mama. The babies are behaving themselves, right? Isn't mama happy when the babies behave themselves? <laughs> so the young capybaras are very slow. And one of their biggest predators is the anaconda. It's that snake down there. Now the adult capybaras, their biggest predator is actually the jaguar. Did Alexa switch dolls today during the face? Oh, did you switch dolls or has Camille been win with you the whole time? I switched dolls. Oh, you've got a good eye. She did switch dolls. So Alexis is a big fan of Welly Wishers. So for during the summer, we actually did a little series on, um, we called it Welly Wisher Wednesday, and then we would read different Welly Wisher books. That was a lot of fun, wasn't it? We have one for the fall coming up sometimes too. But, you know, so she likes her welly wishers. So now we've got our very last mammal of South America. Ooh, and we're running, we're kind of running short. Uh, we're going long today. It's 2.40 already. So we better hurry with our kinkajous. I think they're just so cute. We've spent too much time on them. So here's Hello, our little kinkajou. kinkajou. Our last one for the day. So kinkajou is spelled K-I-N-K. -K. So that's kink. K-I-N-K. Uh is the letter A, and Jews, J-O-U, Kinkajou. A lot of times when you have um, drawings, you'll have an author and an illustrator. Whereas I noticed with the um, photographic books that there's just one person that, um, that took the pictures and they also wanted to come up with their own words to their pictures. Why does it took them so long to get those um, pictures? So here's the a little um, Kinkajou. They're small mammals. And they're actually related to the raccoons. Here's the kinkajou. Again, the habitat area is very similar to a lot of these creatures with the Amazon rainforest. It's in the northern part of South America and just a little bit in Central America. Um, the kinkajous actually go into Mexico even a little bit. 
So they live in the rainforest. They like to eat, sleep, and play in the branches. And this is another creature that hardly ever goes to the ground. Isn't that interesting? So it's interesting that a lot of these creatures stay in the trees. They have um, very sharp claws. Why do you think they have sharp claws, Alexis? So they can grip onto the tree like a squirrel. Mm -hmm. So you notice all of these different creatures that like to live in the trees, they do have really sharp claws so they can hang on. Because Alexis likes climbing in the tree too, but you know what? She doesn't quite have the good grippers like all these creatures do too. And look at this sweet little baby kinkajou. Isn't that sweet? So cute. So the, she, the mama kinkajou will only have one baby at a time. They like to actually live in little holes in the tree like that. Like and raccoons. Sweet, just because they are. They're in the raccoon family. So I think when we do our drawing, we're going to draw like a big tree. Because a lot of these creatures are either in the tree or on the tree. Time to sleep. There's the little baby kinkajou resting in his home. Isn't he adorable? Aww. He's adorbs. At 12 weeks old, it actually already starts finding food. So a lot of mammals will drink their mom's milk for a little longer. They mostly eat fruit. They have a big sweet tooth, just like you. <laughs> she eats a lot of fruit too. They also like honey, nectar, frogs, and insects. They're also known as honey bears because they eat so much honey. Look at that sweet little honey bear. <laughs> He's licking his chops from all that sweet stuff. <laughs> Aww. So the, when the kinkajou is four months old, it's actually fully grown. And then she'll leave um, mama at about one year and have her own babies at two years old. They're really sweet creatures. So now let's get out our books so we can draw these adorable creatures. Okay, I'll flip it around so we can see, um, as you can see, Alexis's. There's Alexis's. She's got her South American mammals. She's got the different um, facts. So again, she just wrote a little bullet point. She wrote the name, a dash, and a fact about them. So on this white side over here, and on mine is just a blank page, this is where we're going to be drawing our South American mammals. So we're going to draw our tree. I'll kind of scan out a little bit here. I'm going to draw a pretty good sized tree, but then I also want to draw some grassland down here. There we go. And I'm going to make my tree, I'm going to make a couple branches here because we've got quite a few, we've got some creatures that we've got our howler monkey and our sloth. So we'll put the howler monkey probably up higher on the sloth, maybe down a little bit lower. So I'm going to do my sloth branch maybe here. And up here will be my howler monkey branch. And then the sweet little kinkajou, we're going to put him in a hole right over here. So there we go. There's my little rainforest tree. We've got the grassland down here. And now it's fit in our animals. Since I have the capybara book, is one of my first ones I have out here. I think we're going to go with that. So I always look at the shape. Um, so here I like to do find one that is the whole um, creature. So you can kind of see it here. It's kind of stretched down a little bit more, but it's got a very rounded body. And um, kind of a like an oval-shaped head, little tiny ears, almost like mouse-like because it is a rodent. And you can see its webbed feet there too. So let's go ahead and I'm going to draw my little capybara down here. We want to kind of draw a rounded body and almost like an oval-shaped head here. And then it's got um, maybe very much like a mouse-like ear. And the, the eyes are really squinty, I noticed, too. So we're going to draw kind of like squinty eyes. It's got some nostrils here. Let me erase this line here. It almost looks like a muskrat. It does. It, they're very similar to the muskrats. Um, really, the main difference is that the muskrat lives in North America. The capybara lives in South America. And the muskrats like to live alone, and the capybaras like to live... Uh with people. Mm-hmm. And the capybaras are larger. And they also have more of the webbed foot, whereas the muskrat tends to just have the claws. So I'm going to try to draw a little bit of a webbed foot here. It's a little tricky, but I'm going to try. So their feet are a little bit wider. And they have like this webbing, very much like a platypus. What about their tails? Did you notice what their tail looked like? They don't have a tail. No, yeah, they don't really have a tail. So I'll just put a little nudge down there. 
and I'm gonna draw some fur on them. So their fur is pretty coarse too, because it needs to um, be able to withstand the water. Okay, so there's our little capybara. We'll go ahead and label him down here. That was C-A-P-Y-B-A-R-A. Fair. And then now let's do our jaguar. Our jaguar, I want our jaguar to kind of be in the grass here, looking, waiting to prowl. So the jaguar, very similar to a lot of our wild cats. Um, he's large, of course, but there's not a lot of different distinct features other than the, the spots and the rosettes are a little bit different than any of the other wild cats. So we're going to draw, let's see, let's draw his head up here. It's a very round looking head. So we'll draw the round looking head. Larger rounded ears a little bit, like they're kind of rounded and pointy. Kind of the almond shaped eyes of the jaguar. And he's got those beautiful golden eyes too. So that's like a cool thing to, um, if you're coloring yours, you could color it like a beautiful There's his nose and the very large mouth. Definitely whiskers. And the interesting thing, he's got a lot of spots, like even just on his face, there's so many spots. So we won't do all the spots of the Jaguar on live because we're already um, at 2.50. I try to be done in an hour. So, but I'll kind of just show a little bit there and then you, you guys can fill in the spots later. But it's definitely a large body. It's a large wild cat. And their tail is quite large too. So I'm gonna kind of draw their tail kind of going up a little bit here. So they've got a fairly long tail and large, strange, strong legs. And this one's kind of hiding in the grass a lot. So you're not gonna see a lot of his body. And then I'll go back through and I'll do the rosettes, but it's kind of cool how they have the rosettes and then like a dot in the middle. So I'll go in a little closer. So I kind of just did the rosettes and then like a dot in the middle. And again, we'll fill that in um, later. So there's your Jaguar. We'll label him J-A-G-U-A-R, Jaguar. Let's do our little Kinkajou in the tree. So here's our sweet little Kinkajou. Look at those ears. That is definitely a very uh, interesting feature, distinct feature. That's what I'm trying to think of, a distinct feature that we can draw. So you can see it's got like a round head and these cute little crazy, almost looks like the letter U. Like if you look at that, it's like the letter U. So we're gonna draw his little head here inside our tree, this little circle shaped head, and then these little U shaped ears popping out on either side. Isn't he cute? And he's got large round eyes and a cute little snout. Does he have, nope, no whiskers. I don't see any whiskers. Almost looks like a little puppy, doesn't he? <laughs> Especially the way I drew it. No, so we'll draw him kind of, let's see, I'm gonna draw his little, cause he does have claws. So I'm gonna maybe draw his claw to the side here like this, like he's holding on over here. I'm gonna have him, so he's holding on on both sides. There's his claws and his cute little furry body. Oh, look at our little Kinkajou. He's so cute. So we'll label him now. Kinkajou's K-I-N-K-A-J-O-U. Kinkajou, little sweetie pie. All right, let's do our howler monkey up at the top and then our, we'll do our sloth hanging down. Ooh, pretty close to the jaguar. Ooh, maybe we should be careful. Maybe I'll put my sloth hanging up there so he can't get eaten by the, I don't want him to get eaten by the jaguar, right? This jaguar's nice. Is he a nice jaguar? <laughs> So we definitely need to make our howler monkey with really, really loud. Sorry, my howler monkey is hanging on to... Gonna hang on the branch? Well, they do. The howler monkeys like to be really high in the treetops. Really high. So um, we're gonna draw our, our howler monkey as far up on our page as we can go. We'll draw our howler monkey up here. So we're gonna start with the interesting um, shaped eyes. And you can kind of see the black skin around the eyes. See like how it's got the, he has the black skin. Where's it? There we go. The black skin around the eyes. So we're going to draw the, that black skin around the eyes first. I like to draw whatever the distinctive um, feature is first. So I'm going to kind of draw like the mask around the eye. 
and then lots of space for a big mouth. So it almost looks like a frog here the way I'm drawing it. But these are actually going to be his eyes. And then he's got his little nose here and then a huge open mouth. So he's howling. <laughs> Isn't he crazy? And then they just have little tiny ears. So we'll kind of draw his head. And they almost have like a little bit of a beard. So we're going to draw his head like that. And we're going to draw like the hair kind of hanging down like this. Because they do almost have like a beard. And they just have little tiny ears up here. Let me erase the, where the tree is here. And then we'll kind of just draw him with his body this way. And he's going to kind of hang on up here. Because they have like their, um, both their hands and their feet are very much like, like our hands with the fingers and stuff. But they do have the claws. I'm going to draw the claws. And then... Um, their tail is also fairly long too, so we're gonna let make sure his tail is. But the likes are held onto the tree, so their I'm gonna draw his tail kind of like holding onto this branch here. There, so he's got there's his the howler monkey hanging on for dear life. I guess I'm gonna have to put my sloth here, so we'll just have to draw a sloth a little smaller. And you just be careful, little sloth; they don't get eaten by the jaguar. So let's label our howler monkey. Again, it's H-O-W-L-E-R, and then monkey, M-O-N-K-E-Y, holler monkey. And so yeah, we're going to fit our little sloth over here. I'll put him closer this way so he doesn't get eaten. So as we know, the sloth's hanging upside down and just has a sweet little face. But I think I might have our sloth looking at us. So there's the sloth hanging upside down. And then look at that little sweet little face where they look like they're smiling. They're so cute. And there's another one. Look how he looks like he's smiling. Doesn't he look so happy? But his hair does, you can tell his fur looks really scratchy, doesn't it? He does not look like he would be soft at all. He looks like a goat. Yeah, it probably fur. does feel a lot like goat fur. I bet it, re it really is. So I'm, first we're going to draw those long arms coming down. I'm going to draw, this one's going to be a three-toed sloth. One, two, three, one, two, three. And he's gonna be hanging down from here. So there's one arm on one side, one arm on the other. And then let's draw his little feet also. Hanging on up here. One, two, three. And then we'll draw his belly. Oop, the other part of his leg. There's his belly. And then I'm gonna draw him so he's kind of looking at us. So even though he's hanging upside down, he's actually going to look at us. So let me erase that little part here that I did. There we go. And I'm going to make him so he's happy and looking at us. So and there's his little eye. And sometimes they have a little bit of like a, a mask around their eye just a little bit. Not a lot, but... And then, well, you know what? Maybe I will draw him so he's facing this way. And there's his little nose. There's his mouth. Actually, it kind of does look good to go in that way. So there's my cute little sloth hanging upside down. We'll label him sloth. L it's L O T H sloth. And there we have our South American creatures. We have our howler monkey, kinkajou, sloth, jaguar, and the capybara. Pretty cool, huh? Oops, I forgot to, I was gonna put yours on too. Well, thank you so much for exploring South America with us. And next week, we're actually going to start on fish. So we're all done exploring all the mammals all over the world. And tomorrow we're gonna go live, maybe around two-ish or so, and we're gonna share how Alexis is coming with her mammal research report and if any of you would like to join us i noticed there's something that says you can bring somebody on screen with you so i thought it might be kind of fun to share um your mammal report if you'd like to so go ahead and reach out to us through our um, facebook message and we'll try to see if we can figure out how you can come and join us like kind of get on screen with us and you can share your mammals that you've been learning about too wouldn't that be fun yeah so we'll see you again tomorrow talking about our mammal research report. And next Wednesday, we're going to start the fish all around the world, right?
Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching. Just their towels. That were just, just their tails, not their towels. <laughs> so I know it's been kind of going fast. I was talking to another parent that usually we would maybe do South American mammals and we would take the whole month to learn about them. But since we're switching from week to week, Alexis has even asked, wait a minute, we're switching continents already? That went fast, right? It's been kind of going fast because we've been doing so much and so fast. So as we get into fish, we're actually going to slow down a little bit and just talk about one particular kind of fish each week to make it not quite so crazy, right? And we've been doing huge, what are the libraries right down the road from us? And we've been actually using my garden cart. We load up all the books. So we've been taking a lot of books back and forth because even beyond the ones we have here, we get extra books because we go through them to figure out which ones we want to even share with you. So it's been a little bit crazy doing all these mammals, but it's been a lot of fun too. I've learned a lot too. And that's the great thing about homeschooling is it's not just the kids that learn, the parents get to learn with them. And then, and because we love animals and we love learning about things around the world, it was a perfect little fit to put the two together.